Hi, my name is Charlene Nelson from cometochrist.ca and today I want to share with you five things that Reformed Christians should tell each other more often. So many of us who are Reformed have come out of a more seeker-sensitive movement like myself. So you might have heard a gospel that wasn't a gospel where you were told you have a God-shaped hole in your heart that only Jesus can fill. Um, or, you know, God has a wonderful plan for your life and you need to believe in him and uh, you'll have that wonderful plan. So those things on their own aren't the gospel. Uh, we need to hear about Jesus dying for our sin, taking our punishment and rising from the dead to save us. That's the gospel. So um, people in general have a tendency to swing from one extreme to another extreme. And as a result, some great biblical truths can be diminished. Um, some of us have become squeamish about softer texts. Um, but there are things that we should say more often that can encourage each other and especially help people who are feeling um, down and discouraged. So I'll share those with you now. Number one is that you are precious to God. Um, so 1 Peter 3, 4 says, let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. A lot of people miss that little statement right there. And that tells you that your heart can be very precious to God, which is an amazing thought that God would um, behold a human heart, the heart of a believer and say, that is beautiful to me. Um, also Zephaniah 3.17 says, the Lord God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. A lot of us might not ever even believe, well, we're totally depraved. How could God rejoice over us? But the Bible says that he can and that he does. First uh, John 3, 1 says, See how great the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. So God has a great exuberant um, and rejoicing love that he has lavished on us. And we can encourage each other. Um, when we feel maybe worthless or um, discouraged that God considers you to be very precious. The second thing we should tell each other more often is that we love you. I love you. I care about you. Um, you're important to me. Um, so biblical example would be Paul um, said in 1 Thessalonians, we were gentle among you like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you had become very dear to us. So um, that might make us squeamish. <laughs> it's a little awkward that Paul said he was like a nursing mother, uh, but he's sharing how he affectionately cared for them and considered them dear and was gentle to them. Um, Philippians 1 8 Paul said God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus and in the end of many of Paul's letters he says greet one another with a holy kiss so that culturally isn't really acceptable for most of us but the point is that we can express love care and affection for each other and maybe we should greet each other with a holy hug uh, more often so the third thing is that it's okay for reformed Christians to say God made you for a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it's biblical that God made you for a purpose. We understand that in the world, when people think wonderful plan for your life, that means I'm going to have fun and money and comfort and all these health and great things. But um, we as Christians believe that it's wonderful to be able to walk in Jesus and to do the good works that he's planned for us. And he has made us for a purpose to glorify himself. And there is no better purpose uh, in the world than that. So God made you for a purpose. You should say it more often. Number four we can tell each other, we need you and you're important to us in the church. So 1 Corinthians 12 says that I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. So 
people who feel maybe they don't have a great ministry gift or they're struggling right now, they're not a very much good to anybody. Um, the Bible says that we should um, cover those people in love and humility and um, help to build up the weaker brothers and sisters and that they are indispensable as all members of the body are indispensable, um, which is another way of saying you're important and you matter and we need you. So it would be good of us to say those things. Number five, the last one you could say uh, to your reformed brothers and sisters more often, you're doing a good job. So that statement might make you nervous because you know God hates pride, arrogance, and conceited boasting. The Bible is clear on this in several places. So 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, encourage one another and build each other up. So we might get stuck and think, what does that mean? Um, so if you're worried about feeding someone's pride or building their ego, then um, Paul has you covered because he's got a lot of good examples of how he did this. So like Paul, you can boast of your confidence that the Lord is working in people's hearts and that you're excited about that. So the first example teaches us that we can praise the good work God is doing and will do in others. So Philippians 1, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart. So Paul just expressed that he knew God would do good work in other people and that he'd finished the work he started. And um, the next example teaches us that you can assert confidence in other people's ministry efforts, in their obedience and in their work for the Lord. So 2 Corinthians 7 says, our boasting before Titus has proved true and his affection for you is even greater as he remembers the obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. Our next example is that you can praise people's faith and their perseverance through affliction and hard times. Our example is 2 Thessalonians 1, 4, which says, We ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecution and afflictions which you endure. And our last example teaches us that we can be so connected with each other in the Lord that we can be proud of how we have impacted each other's lives. Yes, you heard me right. I said we could be proud. So where do I get that from? Uh, 2 Corinthians 1.14 says, We are your reason to be proud, as you also are ours in the day of our Lord Jesus. So when we stand before him, we're going to make eye contact and we're going to be like, yeah, we impacted each other's lives for Jesus and Jesus worked through us. And that is an arrogant boasting. It's humble happiness that you were able to please God together and through each other. So building one another up isn't humanism and we can practice this biblically and we should practice it more often. So thank you for watching and I hope you were encouraged.